Welcome to the podcast, Guidance with Gab, learn and unlearn all things wellness. So today we have on Hannah, the founder of Journey to Well, who is a somatic breathwork practitioner and holistic a holistic coach, and also has a new podcast, Journey to Well, which is really exciting. So welcome on. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited for this conversation. Yeah, me too. So some people might not really be in the world of breath work at all. So can you give kind of like a basic intro answer to kind of what breath work is and more specifically somatic breath work? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So, so breath work in general, we all breathe every day, right? We breathe yeah. so many times a day, but we do so unconsciously. We're not thinking, okay, let me take my next breath in. We're not thinking, let me take my next breath out. Um, so what, how I like to describe breath work is just taking that thing that we do unconsciously every day and bringing it into our conscious mind. And why that's really important is because our breath really has the power to affect our nervous system. So if you think about when you're really stressed, next time pay attention to this because you might not recognize it even mm -hmm. right now, but when you're really stressed, we tend to take very shallow like chest breaths or we stop breathing. What I've noticed is when yes. I am really stressed, I'm like, oh my God, I haven't just taken a breath for the past like 45 yep. seconds or yep. whatever the time is. So we our breath changes depending on what state our nervous system is in when you're birthing a baby like when women are having babies they focus doulas and birthing coaches they focus on our on your breath um so breath work when we choose to mindfully breathe we have that ability to almost manipulate the nervous system so we have two different stages of the nervous system. I feel like we need to talk about this. We have the sympathetic, mm -hmm. the parasympathetic. So a lot of people know that as the fight or flight and then the rest and digest. And we want to be more in the rest and digest if we can. Mm -hmm. And breathwork is one tool to bring ourselves into that rest and digest mode. So the particular breathwork that I am trained in and somatic breath work is actually stimulating both of those nervous systems. The first half mm -hmm. is stimulating the sympathetic nervous system because when we stimulate that system in a safe environment, uh, we're able to allow the emotions to bubble up and we're able to allow processing um, through, through body body processing, I guess, through like vocalizations, through movement, through sound. Um, and then we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system in the second half, which is really that rest and digest, that repatterning round. So mm -hmm. breathwork, I'm obsessed with breathwork. I know that you love your breathwork practice. My, my invitation or, or what I always say to all of my clients is just start with whatever form of breathwork speaks to you because we have box breathing right like you can do right. that for 30 seconds and just do box yeah. breathing or you can do the pranayama the al alternate nostril breathing i love um, that one. yeah there's so many great types of breath work and start exploring what what works for you even if you just start paying attention to like oh wow i'm breathing really shallow right now because yeah. i'm really stressed let me take a deep inhale through my nose and exhale and see how that makes your body feel and how that feels in in the present moment and hopefully you'll recognize that but yeah, yeah. I feel a little bit calmer <laughs> yeah when even when you said that i took a deep breath and i'm like okay yeah i even needed that i think what's cool about breath work is we never know we need it until we yeah. finish or during it and we're like oh wow i feel like a brand new person yeah Super interesting the type of breath work that you explained you do by playing with both sides of the nervous system. Mm -hmm. that, that sparked a thought for me because I've been having this kind of like revelation about the yin and yang and the feeling of like, especially when you're a yoga instructor, there's this persona that you're almost expected to live up to and it's being in this state of peace all the time. And for me, I'm, I'm, have that but i also have that like strong energy of i need to transform it in a way that isn't taking a meditation when i'm super angry like it is transforming it 
physically, like mm -hmm. going out, maybe doing kickboxing, maybe going on a run. Like I need to channel both sides. I'm not just the, oh, I'm feeling really angry. Let me sit and meditate and I'll be fine. Like that's not going to work for me. I can do that after I do the really like hardcore physical thing to like shake up the energy. And then I can mm -hmm. slow down and meditate and process. But it, I just love how it incorporates both and that you yeah. touch on it because we do want to be in rest and digest more often of the time, but when we're not, we need to know how to deal with it. So, yeah, yeah. because especially in the spiritual community, I mean, you bring up such a good point. Like I think a lot of times being in this community, we have this pressure or this expectation of like Zen all the time. Mm -hmm. Like nothing, nothing ever bothers me. I just let everything roll off my back like water. Right. And, um, that's, th there's some, there's some level of truth to that, but you're so right. When we have these emotions, the point is not to stuff them down. What we're doing when we're like, oh yeah, everything's all fine. I'm just going to meditate my way out of it. You're yeah. actually, you're also stuffing it down. You're also repressing it and turning away from it instead of allowing it to bubble up through your system. And that's really the first half is allowing whatever to come. Like sometimes people do express anger and that's a good thing in a breathwork session. Yeah. You can yell, you can punch a pillow, you can hit the floor, you can kick your legs. If you think of kids, like I love the analogy of looking at children or even looking at animals in nature when they come across a really stressful situation. Like think about your dog when he gets scared or something happens where it jolt, jolts his nervous system, they shake it out, right? Mm -hmm. Or kids, when they have a temper tantrum, when they're really upset, they throw themselves on the floor, they kick it out, they wave their hands, but then guess what? They're totally fine 30 mm -hmm. seconds later or five yeah. minutes later because they've allowed that emotion to rise up and exit. And that's what we're doing in that first half of a breathwork session is we're actually allowing. It's this huge permission slip of whatever needs to come out. If you need to cry, freaking cry, girl. Like, do it. Up. I cry all the time in my breath, in my breathwork Me session. Me too. But you know, we have to. There's nothing wrong. And that's really the stigma I feel like that breathwork allowed me to break through is mm -hmm. I my history is I had a really hard time expressing. Like I still don't love crying in front of people. It's mm -hmm. just something I think there's so much conditioning there that like we we shouldn't cry or, we sh or we're overly emotional if we cry or something like that. Right, and same right. with expressing anger. I don't do that yeah. often in front of people, but in a breathwork session, that's where, like that's the first introduction that I had to, oh, let me just, let me just explore this. Let me let it move through me. And I don't even have to know what I'm angry about because yeah. emotions get stuck in the body. It's like all this stuff that we have repressed that we yeah. need to, if we want to become clear, if we want to like kind of take that next level up, we have to chop off all the, all the things that we've been holding mm -hmm. on to that have been holding us down to allow yeah. that ascension. Yeah. I think anger is, it can be super productive. I'm someone yeah. who, if I'm a big feeler, like I will feel everything to its biggest capacity. And mm -hmm. when I feel anger, I'm not the type that's going to like shut down and swallow it. Okay. I'll deal with it. Like I need to hit it head on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been really cool exploring anger as a useful tool. Like I am feeling angry. How am I going to now get it out? Because I know yeah. if I swallow it, my body is going to then eat it up. And now I'm going to have the physical effects, which I don't, I don't want. I've experienced the, you know, I have a certain emotion and then I start feeling um, like physical discomfort somewhere in my body. And then when I eventually start digging that up, I'm like, oh, it's because of this time and this emotion. And you start yeah. to make all those connections. So anger, I think needs to be more accepted. Like, we accept all of the emotions. Even sadness is is pretty acceptable compared to anger. It's like, but why yeah. are you angry? Like it because it's a feeling. It's a feeling just like happiness and sadness and excitement. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a feeling. It's mm -hmm. also stepping away from good and bad. It's yeah. There's there's no good and bad. There's just feelings. They're yeah. All, 
they're all acceptable, which, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to ask what a breathwork session looks like with you then. If you're playing with both sides, like what does that look like? Yeah. So we have a few different versions depending on time, but I highly recommend just doing the full journey, which is an hour. It ends up being like an hour and a half because we do a whole intro process and then a whole outro uh, mm -hmm. sharing process, but we breathe for an hour. So it's broken up, like I said, into two halves. So the first half is about 30 minutes and there's a lot of music involved in somatic breath work. So we do like the first half is kind of upbeat, rhythmic. I, I mean, you can choose whatever music you want. I like the tribal music. I like the drums, like more ancestral music. I feel like that really helps me connect. Um, yeah. So that would be the first half. And, and even the first half is broken into three separate songs, basically. And with each song in between each song, we do a breath hold. So the mm -hmm. breath hold, you would just like fill up, empty out, fill up, empty out, fill up, hold at the top. And then keep all of your breath in for like 30 seconds, a minute, minute and a half. It's, there, there's not a, a time limit or a time constriction there. Mm -hmm. um, and the breath holds are a really great time to just equalize, to get back to that homeostasis for a moment. And then you go into another breathing round. So you have three rounds of the, the in through the mouth, out through the mouth is how we stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. So you would breathe all the way down into your belly. And then you do the breath holds. And then the second half, we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system by breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Oh, sorry. And when you breathe out through the mouth and in through the nose, we kind of naturally elongate the exhale. So that's yeah. kind of the science behind stimulating the parasympathetic. So mm -hmm. even if you're like one thing that I love to just give away or take away, if you find yourself in a very high stress situation, maybe you just had a really tough conversation or maybe you're just running from thing to thing to thing in a day because we all get busy, um, taking the inhale through the nose and then exhaling through the mouth and trying to slow down that exhale a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful. And that will just automatically, you're automatically stimulating that parasympathetic nervous system. Um, mm -hmm. So then we have three rounds of that and we do breath holds in the second half as well. And that ends up being an hour long session. Yeah. That sounds like a great time. I did my first like hour breath work class, uh, I think over the summer and yeah. I didn't know what to expect because I went in thinking, oh my gosh, this sounds like a really long time to just breathe. Yeah. And then you get in it and you're like, I don't want this to end. <laughs> like you get so connected to yourself and just you get separated from the outside world. Mm -hmm. And it's this like weird magical place that it kind of brings you to, which I love. So if anyone's scared of hearing an hour of breathing, once you're in it, you are like, you're in, you feel yeah. really good. It's, it's not as scary as it sounds. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. You're right. Because the first time that I did a breath work, like it did feel, especially that first half, because it is work. Like you're, yes. you're working because you're really clearing out a lot. The second half always tends to fly by. But now that I've done, like even the second one, I do a whole hour and like you go into this weird time warp yeah. where you're like, and all of my clients say this too. They're like, was that really an hour? Because yeah. it felt like 15 minutes or it felt like yeah. very, very short. So yes, it sounds intimidating, but mm -hmm. once you get with your breath, it really, it's yeah. really not as intimidating as as we anticipate, I think. Yeah, a hundred percent. Do you have any stories from like your own personal experience using breath work that are just like worth telling, I guess? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. There's so much. I mean, the, the best thing about breath work is every session is different. And mm -hmm. so I've had sessions where, like I said, I've, I've just cried and I didn't really know what I was sad about, mm -hmm. um, which is actually very powerful for me because we live in, in a world where we're like, we live in our minds. We live in a very masculine energy dominant world yes. and not, not like man or 
woman, but like just masculine energy if you're not familiar yes. with that. So um we always we always want the story, like, why are you upset? Even if you see someone crying, you're like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? What happened? Yes. We yes. live in that world where we have to label things and and we have to know the story behind things. Mm -hmm. I love to challenge that. Do we have to know what we're upset about? Do we have to know what, what emotion is processing? Because tears, water is very cleansing. So it could be you're processing something that you're not even sad about. It's mm -hmm. just like it needs to come out of you. So I've had a lot of sessions where, um, where I've just kind of cried. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and like just moved through it um i've had sessions where i know that you talk a lot about like inner child work inner child healing so mm -hmm. anyone that's along that journey uh, i've had sessions where like my seven-year-old self came and we just hung out and went on a whole journey with the breath work there mm -hmm. and that's been really powerful wow. um i think yeah i mean that that was really cool i've had stuff where like memories have come up that i have not thought about since the event happened right. um, and been able to process that which is so cool too so every session is different like you can't mm -hmm. i tell my clients too because sometimes they'll come to me and they're like oh i'm really stressed out about this or i really like i i really want to focus on my relationship today or my business today and i'm like we totally can let's set an intention around that but just know that whatever needs to come up will come up and it mm -hmm. might not be the relationship or the business. Yes. Uh, zero expectations every session. And it always ends up being a super powerful experience and exactly what you needed. Yeah. I think the body knows what you need to let go of. So we're going in with one intention and the body is like, uh, 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 or maybe that's the root. Like maybe your body is getting to like, the root as to why you're feeling the stress around the topic in the present yeah. moment. Maybe it's shaking up stuff in the past. Like, like you said, you had memories come up and I've had that too. Even in a yoga class before we hit mm -hmm. this one spot on our calves and that was probably like 10 minutes into the class. It was a 75 minute class mm -hmm. and I was, it felt like a trip. It felt like a proper mushroom trip or something. I was in this weird space of just like crying and with my childhood self. Like I yeah. felt like I was a kid and I was watching this movie of my life. And it was crazy for me to think I am doing this solely with my body. I haven't taken anything. I haven't done anything. I've done breathing in this class and I hit a certain part on my body. And it was like, oh my God, I have all this stuff that I need to process. <laughs> so, it was, it was very overwhelming, but in almost like the best way. So yeah. I think all your examples, it's, it's so true. It's, it's what we need to get out. Maybe not what yeah. we want to get out. Yeah. So beautiful though. And um, emotions get stored in our body. I think that's something that we need to talk about and recognize. Like th that's really the heart of somatic work is to, to me, and I, I'm, this isn't like the scientific definition or the actual history, but yeah. like I always think of therapy, traditional psychotherapy is is dealing with the mind and it's a very top down approach. So we deal with our thoughts, we deal with our mind, and then we talk about the emotions and then we might get in therapy if you have like a very holistic holistically trained therapists, we might eventually get down to the body. Mm -hmm. But with somatic work and especially somatic breath work, it's the opposite. It's the bottom up approach. So we're starting mm -hmm. with the body, the sensations in your body, and then we're maybe diving into the emotions. And probably we might not get to the story. You might get to the story, like some memory might come to you. Um, but really like starting with, with the bottom because emotions when we feel an emotion when we go through when we feel an emotion especially a dense emotion which is what i label are like what we label the bad emotions Ooh, mm -hmm. okay. um <laughs> got some balloons <laughs> when we go through an emotion like anger frustration sadness those are maybe the denser emotions that emotion when we don't allow that feedback loop to process when we don't allow ourselves to fully feel the sadness for an event that could be something big it could be a death it could also just be like 
man, I just, I didn't get the grade that I wanted in school. Like I failed Mm -hmm. this test, right? When we don't allow ourselves to feel that emotion fully, we repress it and it gets pushed down in the body. So like what you're saying, like I pushed this point in my calf, like that's somatic work and that's freaking weird because we don't live in this world where that's celebrated or even talked about enough. But Mm -hmm. when you push that point or when you're doing a breath work and like you feel this sensation in your body, whether it's a tingling or a little shooting pain or uh, maybe a warm spot in the body or a cold spot and then breathing into that and allowing that emotion to come up and and that feedback loop to then complete, that's how we are really healing like that's when that's that's the healing journey that's the healing process we can't talk our way into healing talking only gets us so far and i'm not shitting on therapy because i think that's super important i go to therapy like we all we all should go to therapy we need to talk about our problems as well but you only get to a certain level when you're talking about whatever your dense emotions Mm -hmm. you have to incorporate that that body sensation the somatic and so the root word of somatic is soma which means body yeah that's kind of where somatic comes from yeah that's a when you were explaining that i was picturing like you go to therapy to almost understand and then you do the breath work to feel because you, you do need you do need both of those things to happen and especially with i think all of the the like psychological terms that get thrown out very easily it is easier for people now to overanalyze their feelings yeah. and be like i understand where this mm-hmm. comes from but are you feeling it are you processing are you shaking it out right or are you just still in the mind with it mm-hmm. analyzing it understanding it putting it in another box or are you like feeling it so i think it's a great way to integrate both of them to get the yeah. full experience of, oh, I understand, but I also feel. And yeah. then poof, now I transform and now <laughs> I let it go. <laughs> no, you're so right. That was worded beautifully. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, where do you recommend people start when they're, you know, they hear about breath work? Like, where do I begin? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say... <laughs> I mean, obviously do a somatic breath work session, but to start, I would honestly say just start exploring what speaks to you. Because when we get, when, when I throw out like these five terms, when I throw out Wim Hof, box breathing, pranayama, somatic breath work, just mindful breathing in a meditation, out of those five terms, one of those sparked a little bit of an interest in you. We don't know why, we don't have to know why, we don't have to label it, but probably one of them was like, maybe maybe one or two was like, hmm, that sounds interesting. Maybe it's an interesting name. Maybe it's something that I've heard of before. Maybe it's just something that I feel drawn to. Start there, Google Mm -hmm. it, Google Pranayama, Google Wim Hof, Google Somatic Breathwork, and then begin learning a little bit about it and then try it. Just give yeah. yourself a week. I always say one session is never, never enough. So give yourself a week um, and truly start where you feel comfortable. I think a lot of people, like you said, a lot of people might hear an hour and be like, hell no. Mm-hmm. Okay, then don't start there. Start with 30 seconds of box breathing and see how you feel and do yeah. 30 seconds of box breathing every day for the business week or this full seven days. And then just keep checking in with your body. Keep seeing how you feel Um, because we all need to start somewhere. And Mm -hmm. some people, some people like to fucking like jump in the deep end and they're like, I've never, I've I've had people come to my breathwork classes and they're like, I don't even know what this is. I just like the title of it. And I've never done breathwork before in my life. And they Um, sit through an hour and a half breathwork session and then fucking love it. Right. Yeah. 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 Some people are like, Oh no. Well, I just need to dip my toe and give me, I have a 15 minute daily breathwork practice on my link tree on the link in my bio and Instagram. Like some people need that. Maybe you don't even want to be surrounded with anyone and you want to watch a YouTube video or listen to a podcast about breathwork, Mm -hmm. like truly start where you feel comfortable because you will be guided. You will find your way to 
I believe wherever you need to go, wherever your body feels like, and that's kind of the more difficult part or process to explain. Like, I, I believe that your body will guide you where it's ready to go. And some mm -hmm. people are not ready for a full 60 minute somatic breathwork journey. And that's good. Like don't yeah. force yourself. If you feel an aversion to it, dive mm -hmm. into it, see where, see why you feel nervous because it might just be a fear, but it might just also be like, no, nope, my body's just not ready. It needs to, it needs to tiptoe in. I'm more of a, I'm more of a tiptoer. Uh -huh. uh, I need like, I need a few short sessions and I need to learn about it before I um, go. And <laughs> dive in. I've been having this conversation because my, my boyfriend and I just realized that that is one of the big differences between us is he is a tiptoer. He's going to make a plan. He's going to understand it. He's going mm -hmm. to research it. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to do the hardest thing first and just like see what happens. And we yeah. just have that difference. So it's just yeah. funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> um, I also wanted to piggyback and share kind of like what happened with me and breath work, because for yeah. the longest time, I, when I started, I was like, okay, I should be doing breath work. I should try it out. And I started with box breathing. And for me, I must have, I don't know what was going on, but it made me feel really anxious doing it. I think mm -hmm. maybe part of like control. Yeah. There was just like a mismatch with me and box breathing. Yeah. Even now when I do it, if I'm trying to bring myself to a more neutral state, if I'm feeling anxious or something, box breathing for me, we just don't click. So yeah. I want people to to know, like, if you try box breathing or even Wim Hof or whatever kind of breath work for a week and it's not for you, it doesn't mean breath work isn't for mm -hmm. you. There are so many different kinds. So give them all a chance because once I started doing the breath holds and uh, breath of fire and lion's breath and all these things, I was like, okay, this is more like I'm yeah. connecting with this. I'm feeling something, but yeah, I don't know. Just, just give it a try. Give all of them a little taste before uh, saying no breath work isn't for me. I just want to yeah. add that in there. Thank you for sharing. And it's so true. Yeah. Because sometimes like it, Sometimes even if it's not like a, a negative aversion to it, sometimes we just feel like, eh, I tried it and like, I didn't notice a difference. Great. Yeah. So try something else. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Not everything needs to be for you. Not everything exactly. will be for you. Exactly. I wanted to also talk about, I know you do cycle alignment and you know about that. So what, is cycle alignment it's mostly for women i am mm -hmm. assuming okay yeah i'll let you i'll let you take the wheel on this one yeah oh my gosh i love it so yeah so cycle alignment we're, we're talking about the menstrual cycle ultimately however i recognize that a lot of us are maybe we don't have a regular cycle or if you're on the pill you might not have a cycle at all so mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that it's not for you um, we can also talk in terms of the moon phases or the season. So I kind of talk about all three simultaneously because it really helps. Like, I'm like an, 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 I'm an imagery person. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about winter, let's say that's, that's the season that I'm in right now, um, is like physically, but also I have my period, which is kind of ironic. So, so yeah. winter is associated to the actual menstrual phase. So our actual bleed, which is associated with the new moon. Mm. So I have a lot of information on like my YouTube channel and on my Instagram about that, if you want all of the connections, but just mm. sticking with that, um, cycle alignment is really coming back in line with our natural cycle. So as women, we were created and we reflect nature. So we we go through four phases, the four menstrual phases every single month. There's mm -hmm. four main moon phases. There's four main seasons. I don't mm -hmm. think that's a coincidence personally. No. So coming in line and the power of, to me, why I'm so passionate talking about this and why I share it with my clients and this is really like the heart of my business is because when we're able to come in alignment with our cycle 
we really are able to give ourselves permission. There's that word again, to mm -hmm. be with whatever energy is out there in the universe and whatever energy is flowing within us. So if you think of like the menstrual phase, if you think of winter, winter, just look out in nature for a moment. Mm -hmm. Animals are hibernating. There's no leaves on the trees. No, nothing is being produced. Like nothing is growing. There's no buds on the trees. We're not gardening because the ground is frozen or there's snow on the ground. Winter is a really beautiful time of introspection. It's a beautiful time to cozy up. I always get the image of like a bear in a cave sleeping. <laughs> That's my image. Like cozy up with a blanket in front of the fireplace, read a book. And we again like the masculine energy dominant world that we live in is always focused and celebrating the production the mm -hmm. doing which i associate with like summer or our ovulation phase or the full moon if you think about that energy like it's vastly different it's actually the complete opposite of winter um, yeah. we're out and we want to interact with people and we want to go out and hang with our friends and go out to dinner and do 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 and mm -hmm. that's beautiful, but we also need that time to rest. And they're yeah. all good. Just like there's not any good, bad emotions. There's not any good, bad energy type that we're mm -hmm. feeling or any good or bad phase that we're in, depending on where we are. And what I have found is that in living in alignment with my cycle and listening to my body, I'm actually more productive. I feel more connected to myself. Like I rest more in my life now and my business is bigger and better than it ever has been. Yeah. And instead of forcing, I think, was it you that commented something on my last post? It's like, it's yes. something instead of forcing, right? Flowing. Yeah. It's allowing yeah. that flow because that like that that is how we are as women we're created we have this innate ability to just mm -hmm. flow to live and flow but we've lived so long not just us but like generationally mm -hmm. we've lived so yeah. long not not listening to that flow not tapping into that flow mm -hmm. i was yeah. one of those people high in my masculine and i'm still trying to flow back into my feminine yeah. which i've been doing so much better but i was the person that yeah. was like Oh, um, you know, I have my period. I'm still going to go to the gym, mm -hmm. do super hard weight. I'm going to do, you know, all these things for what? Like I'm draining myself. I already have like 20% battery to give. So why am I overdoing it in places that I don't need to? And it was because of the thought that I need to, I need to be productive. I need to do, I need to create, I need to do all of these things, but when am I being, when am I resting in order to do those things? Mm -hmm. Even the, like, um, like an analogy to the gym, I, I used to be like hardcore overworking out and all of that. And now I've found my balance luckily. And yeah, it's been a nice transition, but I took two rest days off this past week. I took the weekend off. And when I came back to the gym, I used to feel so much guilt because I'm like, oh, I took days off. I need to overcompensate. And now I was like, wow, I have so much energy because I rested. Like I took the rest and now I can come back even better with more improved energy. And I think that's so relatable. Like now when I'm on my period, I give myself like, oh, you want, you just want to eat a grilled cheese or something? Okay. Yeah. Your body needs more carbs. It needs more right now. And you want to lay down and you want to watch a movie? Like that's okay. You don't need to keep forcing yourself into a flow that isn't yours. That yeah. That is man's life pretty much. Not my life anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's really interesting, like men versus women, like we have different hormones, we go through different cycles, men actually go through uh, what we go through in a month, men go through in a day energetically. So they mm -hmm. are on a 24 hour clock. And they're pretty consistent. Like think about I think about my ex and like he would wake up same fucking time, like no alarm clock, same time, go to bed same time every single day, like it was freaking clockwork all the yeah. time. And like very rhythmical, I feel like, and I'm yeah. not saying this is the case for every man, but we're just, we're generalizing, which is not fair. I understand that, mm -hmm. but like, but men do have that 24 hour cycle. Women have that, that like 28, 27 day cycle. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, that I think is why also we struggle because and it's but it's not a bad thing like men it's great that men are are very consistent because they can help us bring that like feminine energy the feminine energy needs a container yeah and the masculine energy is that container so no matter what we're talking about that we need that masculine container which also lives within us because we mm -hmm. all possess the masculine and feminine energy but we need the masculine container I think where I find most people are at in this world is like we live in the masculine container. We don't even address the feminine flow within the container. Yes. And so that um, that's that's interesting. Like it's just yeah, it's it's a very typical story. Like I have the same story. Like I used to yeah. force myself to work out all the time on my period. I would go six days a week. Yeah. Twenty four seven, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there would be workouts. And by the way, I hurt myself a lot. Like mm -hmm. I have back problems because I would push myself way too hard without yeah. even really realizing it. And that's kind of the problem mm -hmm. for me. I assume like we just don't have an awareness. Yeah. Um, but I would push myself and then I would end up hurting myself or I would push myself and just have like a really shitty workout. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, it's better than no workout at all. Yeah. But now like, let's explore. Okay. Let's not go do the heavy weights at the gym when you're in your luteal phase. Yeah. What else can you do? You don't mm -hmm. have to just lay on the couch the whole time. Can you go for a walk, get out in nature, do mm -hmm. some yoga, like explore other forms of movement and see yeah. how that feels to you. Just see how it feels like yeah. give yourself a long time, give yourself like six months because yeah. you have to allow the body to equalize but see how it feels and yeah, play around yeah. With it. yeah we don't need to uh stick to a box even within ourselves if we want to try something out then we have the freedom to do so right we really wanted to talk to you about and i know that this is kind of related to this because i've done some reading about how if you are pushing too much of course it's going to mess up your nervous system a little bit so i wanted to ask what you think most people are doing that they don't know they're doing that is messing with their nervous system if that yeah. makes sense oh my gosh <laughs> yeah no that's a beautiful question nobody's asked me that before oh. um that yeah thanks that's a good question i would say if, if we're talking in terms of sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system most of us live in the sympathetic nervous system and mm. yet we don't realize it because mm. it's the energy of the world everyone is living there like the majority of us are living there so there's a lot of lack of awareness and i'm not saying that like condemning wise i lived there you lived there. like we're just talking yeah. in terms of like working out even like that's us yeah. we were we were there and and i still am there at times mm -hmm. we can't always be in the parasympathetic but or I live unconsciously in the sympathetic still. Like we're mm -hmm. never arriving at like this perfect, I'm always in the parasympathetic. Yeah. So um, what I think I would, how I would answer that question is we're not listening to our bodies. And when mm -hmm. you don't listen to your body, your body's cues, oftentimes when we, don't hear them and or and or we don't respond to them mm -hmm. that pulls us into the sympathetic because our our bodies like our body conversation is like i'm really tired right now please rest i'm going to send you signals like feeling sleepy like mm -hmm. wanting a warm cup of tea like wanting to lay down or like wanting to rest or just watch tv but yet we push through or mm -hmm. we just we have to keep going and so then we're pulling our body further into the sympathetic state because we're not listening to it mm. so my my invitation with a lot of my clients like and this is a whole nother conversation but if you want to work on developing your intuition mm -hmm. a, a lot of what we say developing your intuition is uh truly is learning the communication with the body learning how the body communicates, learning to listen to the body's communications. Um, so 
I don't know if that answers your question, but it I does. feel like when we don't when we don't listen to our bodies, we're pulling ourselves further into that that sympathetic, that fight and flight mode. Yeah, no, I think that was a great answer because it's something all of us can do. It's not yeah. taking a supplement or taking this really expensive class or it's just listening to the body. And I did that for so, so long and it did pull me further away from my intuition. You're totally right. I'm tired. Oh, well, I have to do this. I have all these things to do. Oh, but my body just wants to sleep. And then I started honoring what my body was asking for. And that's when I felt the change in all aspects of my life, the spiritual yeah. change, the emotional change mentally. And it's just such a, a an easy, I wouldn't say it's an easy process, mm -hmm. but, but it's a very accessible practice that people can yeah. do, which well, I because love. Because it's you, it's you. Yeah. And like, like you said, like, I'm not saying like, take the supplement or go do this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not easy. And you're right, because we have spent so much time not listening to our body. So I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, hopefully this will land a huge invitation that that I love is when you wake up in the morning before you get out of bed or when you go to bed at night before you fall asleep do a body scan and a, and a body scan is really simply in your mind in your imagination or if you want to like move your hands over your body but you start at the top of your head or the bottom of your feet whatever you want to do start at the top of your head and then in your mind just imagine like I like to imagine honey oozing over you because it really helps you slow down but mm -hmm. imagine this honey or this white light just covering you and in the body scan begin to notice where you feel sensations in your body. So like right now, if I'm paying attention, my shoulders are really tight right now. Mm -hmm. um, like the back of my neck, but it's really my traps. Um, what else? My feet are cold, but I think that's a temperature issue. <laughs> it's cold here. <laughs> my hands are really warm. I feel like while we've been talking, I, I felt this like gurgling in my tummy and I need to eat. I'm hungry right now. So mm -hmm. noticing those things, and beginning to to possibly explore very curiously, not with shame or with guilt or like with hardness, like I have to know what it is. I don't know why my shoulders are tight right now. It could be the workout that I did the other day. It could be the way that I'm sitting. Like I find myself, I really like lean in when we're having conversations and that's mm -hmm. not like I want to lean out. Um, so it could be a combination of things, but beginning to simply notice this, these are ways that your body is conversing with you. Hunger cues are ways that your body is talking to you. Pain, temperature mm -hmm. changes, sensations like tingling, like your heart fluttering, mm -hmm. like um, feeling warmth somewhere or cool somewhere or having like, sometimes we have shooting pain. Sometimes we have this like dull ache, right? Mm -hmm. Those, those, that's what we mean by beginning to listen to your body and 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 just start there you don't have to go into the story behind it like yeah. some some you know like my tummy's gurgling oh that means i'm hungry mm -hmm. i know that i'm hungry but also your tummy could be gurgling because you're nervous or because yeah. you're having digestive trouble like yeah, yeah. whatever it is but but that's that's what i mean by start in the body and it's not easy in the beginning because when we spend so much time not responding to the body then the body cues become quieter and quieter and quieter. Mm -hmm. So it might be like a very quiet, I have this like very quiet pain in my back, mm -hmm. or I have this very quiet, um, like electrical kind of like stimulation happening in my thigh. It might not be super loud. And that's why it's really helpful to start like first thing in the morning, last thing at night, when you feel your body settling, just mm -hmm. begin checking in. And start there mm -hmm. and then see where that journey takes you. I love that. It sounds like just such a beautiful practice, especially the honey, something to <laughs> slow down. I always imagine, I guess, orange to me is kind of like a soothing color, mm -hmm. kind of like this. It's like a very, mm, like a mm -hmm. nice cozy color. Yeah. I always feel that just flowing through me, just like warming my body, slowing me down, helping me check in, 
So I love that idea of a practice. And the more we get connected to our body's cues, the more we're able to to listen and respect and honor and respond back. So yeah, that was that was a great, great right. I was soothed just listening. I'm like, oh <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a body skin and listen to relax. I love it. But since we're getting to the end, I wanted to ask you the question that I ask all of my guests. So if you were on stage in front of the entire world and everyone is paying attention to you, they're all listening, what would you say? What would your message be? Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> oh, this is such a good question. You could take um, your time. Thanks. My message would be be kinder to yourself, mm -hmm. I think. We're, we're so hard on ourselves and there's so much shame and guilt that we carry for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, and truly, if you want to be in relationship with people, whether that's like an intimate relationship, a friendship or a familial relationship, and you want that deep, beautiful connection and you want that like kindness between you and other people, yeah. you have to show that kindness to yourself first. So that would be, I think that would be my message is be, be kinder to yourself. How can you show yourself more love? How mm -hmm. can you stop forcing even 30 seconds in a day? Yeah. And just be a little bit kinder to yourself. I uh, like it makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. It really does. Moving with compassion and mm. curiosity instead of, like you said, the guilt and the shame. And there's the critic we have. But that that's a beautiful message. And I'm sure it resonated with the listeners because mm -hmm. it definitely resonated with me. Uh, always a good reminder to just, like, be kind to yourself, to others. Yeah. Yeah. So where can listeners find you? Yeah. So I mostly hang out on Instagram. My Instagram handle, along with every other social media, is at underscore journey to well. So you can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, I guess, but I don't really hang out on Facebook. But Instagram's, Instagram's my home. That's where I spend most of my time. And then, like you said, I have my own podcast that I yes. recently expanded from my YouTube channel into a podcast. So um, that is also called Journey to Well. Uh, and, and my name's Hannah. I never go by my last name. So I think <laughs> you can probably find me everywhere on, yes. on Journey underscore Journey to Well. Awesome. I'm sure some people are going to resonate with your message and probably go and find you on everything. But if you are listening, the content is great. I love interacting with your stuff, just kind of reading what you had have to say. And yeah, I, I really love this conversation. So thank you for coming on and just like being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And likewise, I always enjoy all of your content. So I'm really happy that we were able to connect. This was fabulous. Yeah. Me too. Thank you. Thanks.